Hi, I'm Sandy Genovese, and we're going to look at some really cool ways that you can package food. And the thing is, if you want to give something to somebody, in this case, like um, if I open this up, you can see that inside is a cupcake. Making it special enough to put it in its own little box just makes it so cool that it's like you've taken, you know, something that costs maybe a dollar or a dollar fifty, and you've made it like a present. And in this example, you can see that I've cut the same box, but this time, instead of cutting it out of paper, I've cut it out of a clear transparency. You can buy like a box of 50 of them at Staples or any of the office supply stores, and it makes such a cool package. The thing is, I couldn't decide. I just I stuck some fun little candy bars inside, but so many foods are really good looking. I went back to look at the article because Joe provided the food. I just wrote the article. As you know, I don't cook, so it's kind of a scream that I wrote an article for Where Women Cook. But you can see, when I, I look at this page, this was this clear box, and the cool thing that she put inside, it's really, it's so good looking. And you can see how fun it would be to make this fun little box. I used one of her Where Women Cook dies, and they turned out so great that I thought I would show you how to put them together. But I'm also going to show you, if you don't have the die and you don't want the die, how you can do it by, you know, cutting and making it from scratch. So if you have the die, it has the perforations or the uh, crease lines for you. So you're going to fold on the places where there are creases and you fold all in the same direction. So in this case, I'm just making all of them mountain folds. There's a little tab and the tab is where you're going to put adhesive. The tab allows me to take and make it from a two-sided box, which of course wouldn't work, to a four-sided box, which is what you need. So I'm just lining this up with the fold line and pressing down. Now I'm going to put adhesive once again on the same tab. And when I fold this over and fold this over, and press. This gives me the box structure. It also gives me the bottom and the bottom of the box is set so that you push the two short sides in first and then the longer sides have an interlocking slit. So I'll try to do this so you can see. When you lock them together all the way they, they connect. I also, especially if the food is, is heavy at all, I like to go ahead and place a little adhesive there. Now what I should have done is I should have shown you, if you want your box to have decoration on it, of course you want to do it before you close this bottom up. So since I don't have adhesive on this, I can show you. I can open this up and while it's flat, I took a pencil eraser and just a colored a colored ink pad and I liked mixing. I took a little red and mixed it in with the yellow to make kind of a cool color. And I'm going to use this to create just a dot pattern and obviously I'm not going to stop to do the whole thing, but enough so you get the idea. You're going to create the dots on what will be the bottom of the box as well as what will be the top. And then as I said, I found that it works best to put a little bit of adhesive on these flaps. So right now while it's flat and I can do it easily, I'm going to go back and I'll just refold it where I interlock those slits. But now I've got adhesive so that once I've got them locked into place, I'm going to lightly press, put my hands in here, and then really press down to make that adhesive engage. That gives me the bottom. I'm going to stop and make the top and then we'll thread the ribbon through. Now the, the top also has the fold lines are creases. So I'm going to once again fold everything so that they're all mountain folds. When it's flat is when I would go back through. I probably have a little bit. You can see, uh, ooh, not much, but a little. You're going to add your dots or whatever design you decide on. Each of the flaps are going to need adhesive. In my example, as well as adding the dots, I also took a colored marker so that the line this scallop edge, which I think is really pretty. So if you want to just go right along the edge, I'll only do one edge just because of how long it would take to do all of them, but it really does help 
separate the lid from the box bottom and it draws attention to how cute those little scallops are. So once you do that, then go ahead and pull around each of the sides of what will be the lid and then I'm just pushing to engage the, the adhesive. Last one. So once you have the lid, now you need to put the ribbon that you're going to thread through. So I'm going to tie a knot and start with ribbon that's longer than you need. This is about 14 inches. In all honesty, I think it would have been easier if I had a little bit longer still. Now one knot may not be enough. If it's pulled tightly, you don't want it to poke and pull all the way out. So I'm going to do, sometimes I even do as many as three knots. You need to make sure the knots are all on top of each other because the whole point of doing a second and a third knot is to make the knot more fat. So it can't be two lined up next to each other. It needs to be a double knot on top. So once you have it fat enough that it will not slide all the way through that hole, then with the knot on the inside, I'm going to poke the other end through so that I end up with one of the ends of the ribbon here. And then I'm going to go through the outside hole and I'm going to come up and I'll go through the lid and pull it. If your ribbon gets twisted, you can always, it's easy to reach in here anytime and untwist. But so then I'm going to bring it back through the other hole in the lid, poke it through, bring it down, and I'm going to go on the outside and once again poke through the hole in the bottom. Now you can see why I was saying start with ribbon that's longer than you need because it's so much easier to give yourself extra leverage. So now I'm going to reach my hand in here and I'm going to tie the knot and I, as I mentioned with the size of the hole, the holes are already in the die for you so you don't have the ability to switch it out and suddenly make it smaller. So I know one knot's not enough. Even two may not be enough. It sort of depends on how wide your ribbon is to start with. The cord that I use is fatter. So pull this up, tie this, make sure that it overlaps with the first knot so that it's a fat knot. So that's going to end up being the second one. Pull that through and then arrange this so that when the box is closed, you pull on the ribbon and you just, and you can see if it's twisted, it's very simple to just turn and get it so that all the ribbon is straight. It's just the coolest thing. Now that's if you're using the die. If you don't have the die and you're really not interested in purchasing the die, you can make it from, from scratch. What I did to keep it roughly the same dimensions, which was a good size like for the cupcake or for other foods that I, cookies and things like that, I started with a square that is nine and a fourth. So it's a nine and a fourth inch square. And uh, the, in, the bottom of the box is a two and three quarter inch square. So I started by cutting a square and I'm doing a different color here so that you can see that if I set this on right exactly in the middle and then I cut out of the same other color, this green, a swatch of paper that's two and three fourths by three and one fourth because my box has um, taller sides. It's not a complete square. So if I set this like this and then I cut more of this, the, the shape that will be the sides, you can see how I'm going to use this and then I would do the same thing on this end and the same thing on this end. When you do this and you mark all of those edges with pencil, like you see I've done here, it gives you the box shape. Now you're going to cut on just two sides. So if I would cut here and here and then come over and cut here and here. And just to save time, I've already done one. But notice what's happened. 
Notice if I lay this back, you can see when I bring this around and I bring up the sides of the, of the box and I bring these in, you can see that what happens, I've had to trim off so that this doesn't stick out. So I've had to trim off. Notice how the side of the box is taller. And I don't know, it's about, oh, maybe three eighths of an inch is what I've trimmed off. But it doesn't, you don't have to measure it because what you're gonna do is cut on these lines, bring the side around, and you're gonna trim off anywhere it overlaps this edge. And you're gonna do the same thing. So when you bring these around, do the same thing, bring these around, this is gonna give you the box. Now while it's flat, you're gonna go ahead and punch the holes in the two sides, and that will give you the box shape. So if I bring it back like this, you can see here is the box, which is the same dimension as the one that we started with. For the lid, it's actually even easier because the lid, the only thing that's a little bit different is, remember we started, the bottom of the box was two and three quarter inch square, you want the lid to have a little bit bigger dimension so it will slide over. So instead, my lid is the inside, instead of being two and three fourths, it's two and seven eighths. So it's just one eighth inch larger. So you start with a square that's an eighth inch larger, and then laying your ruler down, you make crease marks along this way and along this way. And then along the fold lines, you fold on your creases, on all of those creases, and then you cut, just like we did with the box, only on two sides on this side, two here, and two here, which is what I've done. And then you bring these around, and the same thing, you bring these two sides around and bring this up. Once again, you're gonna wanna punch while it's flat, you're gonna reach in and punch your holes out of the lid. And that way you can create, if I, I'm not stopping to glue these just because it's faster, but you can see how I've created what will be the lid to the box. And if you want a scallop edge, then you just need the decorative edge scissors that will give you that. You know what, if you go back and you look at the finished one, you can see how cool these really are. I think presenting food in a unique and a special package, it only makes it that much more personal and that much more special.